It was an interesting season one of Giants franchise. We went four and 13, probably less than the amount of games you'd like to win. But in real life, the Giants are one and oh. Uh, as you'll notice, no face cam. Uh, still nursing a pretty nasty sunburn from Saturday. I went to the Texas game versus Alabama. Obviously, as you guys know, I'm a pretty huge Texas Longhorn fan, have been all my life. And uh, I mean, in a way, it was really cool to see the team play so well, even though Alabama just played really badly. But also, uh, Texas did lose to a last second field goal. So that never feels good. But my sunburn uh, definitely feels bad. Blisters. But that being said, as you're seeing this video, I am still going to go through with the offseason stream today on Wednesday. The only time I can do it today is 3 or 3.30 central time, which means the offseason stream, that's free agency, that's the draft, which takes another reason why this was delayed other than the sunburn. It takes me so long to get all of the clips for all the prospects and things like that that I want to have. So uh, in order to make it as fun for everybody as possible, and I want this experience to be super fun. It should be a fun episode, right? It's going to be uploaded tomorrow. Obviously, I always get so many questions being like, oh, hey, are you going to upload the most important episode of the season to YouTube? Or is that just going to be only for a select few on Twitch? Yeah, dude, I'm going to upload it like I do every time. But yeah, it, ma it makes sense too, right? Um, but yeah, the only time I can do it is today at three o'clock Central Time, 4 Eastern, live on Twitch. The link is in the description. If the notification doesn't go out for you on Twitch, as it normally doesn't, I'm tweeting out as well. It's twitch.tv slash bangle. My Twitter is twitter.com slash bangle YouTube. Actually pushing towards 100,000 followers on there, so if you want to follow that, please do. But uh, let's go ahead and preview some of our potential draft picks. The mock drafts. As we go through the offseason, we will be getting a third, we'll be getting a fourth and fifth, but currently, I believe at the midseason mark, this is what they expect. Daniel Brinkley, Dalton Stallings, Edward Sloan, Eddie Hemsley, Damian Davis, Avery Atkinson, Terrell Merritt, Joe Fuller, Logan Richardson, and Mike Parrish to make up the top 10. Now, I will mention to you guys, a lot of things have changed. Dalton Stallings is the new number one overall prospect, and we checked him out. I'm not really seeing it. Like, if his block shed ends up being a B, and his pursuit ends up being a B, which is at the very high end of what that possibly could be, does it have A play rec, B zone coverage, tackling? I'm not, like, super impressed with awareness, I guess, could be good. He's an okay athlete. I mean, amazing agility, right? But a little bit disappointing in general for a number one overall middle linebacker, which is just not a position we'd see go number one overall. Edward Sloan, the quarterback out of Miami, is incredibly intriguing as he has great short accuracy, pretty good deep accuracy, medium probably pretty good as well. A throw under pressure with good to great throw power. So this is a, a really interesting player here out of Miami could end up being somebody we consider pretty high in the draft. Daniel Brinkley has dropped a couple spots. Bryce Fry apparently has dropped 43 spots, which I don't know how you can drop 43 spots to number six. It's not really how these numbers work, but regardless of that, you see some other names moving up and down the board here, and we're going to single out and go position by position as well. I just want you guys to be a little bit more familiar with some of our options and some of these players before we actually get into the draft. I want you guys to want certain players. I want you guys to be bummed out if that certain player doesn't end up being drafted by me for whatever reason. Maybe we just miss out on them. Maybe we just end up saying, hey, not a great fit for our team at this moment. But the big one that I wanted to point out here is Chris Kennard. Tight end out of Oregon State has dropped 30 spots. I was considering drafting a tight end at the back end of the first round, and honestly, I was leaning toward the Stanford tight end, Nick Duvall, who is younger, who is probably faster with great to elite speed, where Chris Kennard just has good to great, even though his skills appear slightly better. But the fact that he might be a, a late second, maybe mid second to third round pick makes him a little bit more intriguing 
than Nick Duvall, who is still projected to be in that round one to two range. And the mock drafts that we saw in the second iteration show that he will be a first round pick. Things could change, but the great two elite speed, he's got the size, he's got the ability, except short route running doesn't look that great. Impact blocking doesn't look all that great. But overall, the player does look very, very good. But for a year younger, is he better than Chris Kennard, who's maybe a little bit less athletic, who's still very good everywhere else? Catching is B to C, where I guess Nick Duvall has, I think, as a, a catching, which is phenomenal, obviously. So I don't know. Is Nick Duvall worth the first round pick, or is Kennard a little bit of a better option here in round two to three? Also, a refresher on our draft picks. We pick at number three overall. We were the third worst team in football this year, and we are rewarded with a top three pick. Also, from the Sterling Shepard trade, we have the number 31 overall pick. We also pick number 35 overall, of course, our pick in the second round. And we made a trade with Detroit, sent Blake Martinez to the Lions, uh, ended up trading, I think, maybe a fifth round pick to get back this second. As you can see, we have no fifth, uh, no sixth in there either. We have to do have a Baltimore round seven, but I think that was already from the team. But uh, we have four top 50 picks and then one there at the top of the third round, obviously, as well. And things could change quite a bit, especially if we end up trading down from that number three overall spot. And I've, I've mentioned this to you guys a lot this year. I'm not overwhelmed with the strength of the draft class. I'm just not. I think there are some good players. Obviously, a lot of you guys have expressed serious interest in Daniel Brinkley, the 23-year-old corner out of Buffalo, who is, I mean, quite obviously a very good player. A-man, A-zone is great. My main, I, I guess, I guess my willingness to go another direction, maybe with the trade down, is the fact that I thought he'd be off the board at number three, and now we were, we would be in play for him, it would appear, uh, but solid to good speed, just kind of, I don't love it. Because that's 91 speed, maybe at the high end of that, maybe 92, which isn't slow, but is it worth a top three pick? And you could make arguments for and against it. The arguments against it, well, he's he's not an amazing athlete. He's 23 years old already, so he's not going to progress quite as well as somebody who's 21 years old. But he is good. A man, a zone. However. Here's why I'm not like thrilled with a man a zone. It's going to be low 80s for a fact, which is still very good, but I don't think that's a huge difference from somebody with with B man coverage or C zone coverage here where B is probably going to be, you know, like 77. Is the plus 4 really that big of a difference if the player is significantly younger or significantly more athletic? Not saying we're going to take a corner, obviously, but just it's something to think about. Is the slight upgrade for cover skills right away more important than the athletic traits that they can never get better at? Especially this year, you're not getting speed upgrades. Maybe plus one, plus two in a career. Maybe. But what you are going to get are consistent actual ability upgrades and or technique upgrades like zone coverage man coverage press those are things that will get better maybe the most important position though with daniel jones tyrod taylor being in an interesting spot is quarterback the number one overall quarterback is edward sloan out of miami he's six foot five 224 pounds with good to great throw power only decent to solid speed which as you can see is about average maybe a little bit worse than that so you're thinking probably low to mid 70s, which I don't think is terrible. A break sack is pretty incredible. A throw under pressure. He's got good accuracy short and probably pretty good medium and especially deep as well. So definitely a good player. Not the most athletic in the world, but a good player. And you can say that about a lot of these quarterbacks. James Shaw from Memphis. Six foot five as well, 226 pounds, is 23 years old. It's important to keep in mind the age. The younger players will develop faster. But here's the thing with James Shaw. 
He has a cannon. Great to elite throw power. Not the best athlete. Poor to marginal speed is about as bad as it gets. You're talking about 50, 60 speed, which can be a real problem with extending plays. And you guys know, you know, I, I can struggle uh, quite a bit sometimes as quarterback. But a deep accuracy is fantastic. If there's one thing James Shaw can do well, it is put the ball down the field. And then we get to Bryce Fry. Slightly different build. Is 23 years old as well. The six foot two, 224 pound quarterback out of Nebraska. A to C deep accuracy from seeing just his build, I would say it's most likely a C. Could be a B, could be an A, obviously, but it probably isn't. Throw power is decent to solid, which is not impressive. Speed is poor to marginal, which is not impressive. Although he does have a throw on the run and a throw under pressure, I don't think he has enough redeeming qualities to make him something we would consider in the first round and maybe not even in round two or three or four. The youngest quarterback we've seen so far is Pat Burr. Six foot two, 228 pounds, 21 years old out of Purdue. With A, short accuracy, B, throw under pressure, B, medium accuracy. Deep accuracy could be pretty good. Speed is, once again, not great, but the throw power could be good to great. And then the skills we know are pretty good. A, awareness, usually a decent indicator that they'll be a pretty high overall. And he has an elongated motion with a quick release, which is the same description of this last quarterback we might check out here in the first round. It's the 21-year-old quarterback, Cody Bailey out of Auburn. 6'2", 233 pounds with B deep accuracy. Very good. A medium, A short, and A throw under pressure. Throw power is good to great. Speed is only decent to solid, but that's, again, okay. Skills-wise, quite good. A awareness. He could end up being a very good player, and we know he is a top five overall talent in this class. Here's my concern with that, though, is if he's a 75 overall, right, that might be good enough to make him a top five talent in what appears to be a weaker draft class. Although the corner, like Daniel Brinkley will be around an 80 overall, I, I would bet. But if he's a 75 overall and it's a weak draft class, there might be a bunch of top five talents, if you want to call it that. Because if there are, you know, well, let's say, you know, 10, 76 overall players, if he's a 76 overall, 76 overall could be the second highest rated player in the class. So I don't want to read too much into the top five talent, but we can see based on the key ratings that he is a talented player and he is quite young as well. And he is not projected to be a top quarterback off the board. He is the fifth highest ranked quarterback. It is important to note though, that in the grand scheme of the class, he is a top 10 player. So where does he end up going in the class? If we wanted to go quarterback, would we have to spend the number three overall pick to get him? And is this even a quarterback class where we would take a player high? There's an interesting guy all the way down the board here, Julian Scott out of Michigan. He's 23 years old with a fast shot put style three quarters motion. That's his release. And as you can see, it looks kind of bad. C deep accuracy, D medium, D short, C to F throw under pressure. Not great. What does he do well? Well, He's got great to elite throw power. The guy has a cannon. Lacks accuracy, but he has a cannon. And for a potential UDFA, Julian Scott could be somebody to target that maybe could compete to make the team. Are we in the market for a running back? Not really. We extended Saquon earlier in the year. It was a big focus of mine, and man, did he look good in week one, by the way. But there are some decent options. We had Henry Jackson here out of Georgia. Uh, he seems to be a pretty good player. I wouldn't say he's amazing, but looks pretty good. Agility's kind of middle of the, uh, the road there, but does have a ball carrier vision, which is at least good for his rating. Will he be worth drafting and using? Uh, certainly not for us as a round one player. A guy like Eli Gilmore gets a little bit more interesting as he's a receiving back. I expect that his catching is probably closer to that A range than it is to that C. Good to great speed. He also does have a spectacular catch. B trucking's pretty good too for a receiving back. Carrying's kind of whatever. 
but this is someone that is at least interesting as a receiving back but again with Saquon Barkley we pretty much already have that you know kind of some whatever running backs in this class maybe the next one that's most interesting is Rayshon Simmons out of Purdue B ball carrier vision a break tackle I like that a carrying so he's not going to fumble speed is solid to good which isn't really that bad for running back and if he had higher trucking I would I would really consider drafting him but if he is available if he falls further than he's supposed to maybe round four to get another running back in there uh, not the worst idea. Here's another uh, couple that could be rated pretty well. Benji Wheeler, A, ball carrier vision. B, carrying, uh, not an athlete is the problem there, but A, stiff arm, B, trucking. Could be a good short yardage back. Mac Friedman, five foot eight, 207 pounds. I mean, built like a bowling ball. A, ball carrier vision. Again, not the best athlete. Kind of tough to find too many redeeming qualities there outside of his vision. Do you have a couple fullbacks on my list? Uh, Skylar Styles is the big time blocking back. And is it Jamie Mahone? Is Jamie Mahone the one? Good to great speed. He has a break tackle, which I liked quite a bit. And great to elite agility for a fullback, but it's something to consider. And then Marcus Spillman was the other one. These are guys that just like maybe would make the team. Good to great speed. B, break tackle. A to C on a lot of those things. Kind of tough to really know where he is. Top rated receiver. The only true round one projection is Ohio State. It's surprise, surprise with the school, by the way. Ohio State, Mike Parrish. C catching traffic, C catching, which really is not that bad this year, by the way. I, I want that to be really well known. C for receivers is not so bad, especially when they have B deep route running, B release. He's also got great to elite speed which you're talking mid to high 90s minimum, it's something to consider. It really is. Something that we really want to consider. Good to great agility and acceleration. Good to great jumping. And there's potential here. B release. A to C spectacular catch. A to C spin move. A to C stiff arm. A to C break tackle. Mike Parrish could end up being a very, very good player. He really could. I wouldn't get too caught up with the the, the C grades in there because it, it doesn't always mean they're a great or bad player either way. Nate Vickers, though, when I see C to F catching traffic, it, it scares me a little bit. A to C deep route running could be pretty good. And overall, he just seems solid. I mean, good to great acceleration. Great to elite agility is amazing. Great to elite change of direction. Good to great speed. Kind of dealing with a Kadarius Tony type player. But, um... We don't really know about the juke for sure or ball carry vision. Spectacular catch, short route running, spin move, catching in general. Just kind of okay. Definitely looks good, but uh, he'd have to be he'd have to be falling down the board a little bit, I think, for me to consider him. Stefan Mann uh, is the biggest receiver so far. Six foot three, two thirty five. Plays like it too. I mean, a catch in traffic, b deep route running. He's gonna be not a deep threat per se, but. Kind of that jump ball guy. Maybe send him on like fades and, and maybe some goes and just see if he can win a jump ball. Decent to solid speed. I'm not really overly impressed with that. Uh, what I see here is probably like Kenny Galladay, but spectacular catch, not that great. Catching, D catching is just concerning. C, I'm, I'm okay with, but I don't really like the idea of D catching. Uh, Cecil McFadden is another interesting guy here with F deep route running. Now, the reason I wouldn't be overly concerned with that is because he could just be a slot receiver. His archetype is playmaker, so you'd expect good short route running, good medium maybe, good catch in traffic, catching overall, and those things are okay, but not amazing. Maybe one of the best value players in the draft to me is Larry Smith from USF. 5'10", 191, 22 years old. Has some pretty good player notes in there as well, as like excels at creating yards after the catch, rack catch. Uh, no issues climbing the ladder to make catches. And for a 5'10 guy, kind of reminds you of Odell in some ways. Fights for every single inch as a runner. Exceptional body control on the sideline. Yeah, it needs to work on simple concentration drops. Don't love that. But, I mean, he looks pretty good. C catching traffic is fine. B catching it. B deep route running. B release. I think there's a world where Larry Smith is the best receiver in this draft. And with a round two to three projection... 
it's tough not to get behind that. Great to elite acceleration. Good to great agility. Good to great change of direction, jumping. Great to elite speed. And then the things get pretty good here when you check out the skills even further than that. Medium route running is concerning at C to F. Short route running is a D. This is not, even though he's small, right? This is not like Sterling Shepard who was on the team who's no longer. It's not like Wandell Robinson. It's not like Kadarius Tony. This is a pure deep threat. A to C spectacular catch could be good, could be bad. It could be whatever. He's not really this great all around player, but if you need somebody to just run past the defense and hold on to the ball, I think Larry Smith could be your guy. There is a lot of potential here, and maybe it would be worth making him a focus player in scouting in the offseason. I talked about it a little bit already, but the tight end conversation is really going to be the most interesting storyline, or one of them for me with this draft. Which one do you take, if any? Great to elite speed is tough to come by with A catch and traffic and A catching. A pass blocking, a little bit less relevant. Short route running is whatever, but B medium route running, A to B spectacular catch. So it's going to be at least good. A to B run block finesse. So he's going to be a pretty good run blocker. B trucking. Nick Duvall is a very good tight end prospect. Very, very good. And so is Chris Kennard. Just maybe not quite the same athlete. Great to elite jumping is pretty cool. Uh, short route running is a B for a fact, which... I mean, tight ends are going to be running on short routes often. So to have someone that's actually good at that, I like that a lot. F injury is also a bit of a concern, by the way. Never really want to see an F anywhere. And F injury, I mean, D to F for Nick Duvall is not great either. Mark Whitlock, another Stanford tight end down the board. It is one of those big tight end universities. Stanford, Iowa, Notre Dame, kind of the big three that stand out. He's got A to C catching traffic. Could be good, could be whatever. A to C catching, same deal. B deep route running, B run blocking, good to great speed. Skills, he's got A short route running. Best short route running tight end in the class. Better injury maybe, deep route running is still pretty good. A little bit more questions with Mark Whitlock, but six foot six, 265 pounds, only 21 years old. If we're gonna take a tight end, and we lose out on the first two, Mark Whitlock is not a bad option down the board. Like, huge, fast, definite potential. Um, you can say some similar things about Jaden Rhodes. Very big, A catch in traffic, 6'6", six six, 247 pounds. Not quite the same athlete with only solid to good speed, which is still not bad. Great to elite strength, great to elite agility and jumping. Run blocking could be quite good, but A catch in traffic, a pass blocking, A impact blocking, interesting player down the board. Tight end could be definitely something we target. Larry Knott, I have watched here as well. I think he was just a good athlete. Yeah, good to great speed, but some big question marks in there. Kyle Martin out of Louisville, also very intriguing. We looked at him and a lot of these tight ends earlier in the year as well. B catching traffic, B catching, B deep route running. Good to great speed, great to elite agility. What you'll notice with him is he's six foot two, 256 pounds, more of an H back, right? Maybe you're like your hybrid fullback. And I think a lot of his attributes reflect that. He is a very different tight end than some of the guys we checked out earlier, even though he is the vertical threat archetype. I don't really know if that's quite his game. We're pretty much set at tackle, but there are some ones that are expected to go fairly high. Uh, maybe not so much at left tackle. But Enrique Kaysen out of LSU is the top guy in there. Uh, but we are set at left tackle with, with Andrew Thomas. I can tell you we're not drafting a, a left tackle high. Although we might consider drafting a guard high. Maybe someone like Logan Richardson out of USC. 22 years old, 6'6", 335 pounds. Great to elite strength and change of direction is very, very good. Skills-wise, A, run block power. Run block power, pretty important if that's going to be the type of player that they are. And he's very strong. We know that. And Greg Pinkston kind of cut from the same cloth. Six foot three, 334 with A impact blocking. Pancake City. 
B pass blocking is interesting because I think run blocking with power would probably be pretty high. He's got good to great strength. Not the exact same level of athlete as the last player, Logan Richardson, but A run block power. And we know he's a pretty good pass blocker already. Greg Pinkston looks really good. And we certainly could be looking for a starting left guard to play over Joshua Azudu. It's something to consider. Brandon Dawson here to Oklahoma. Looks like he could be pretty good. Kerry McDougald out of Colorado. When you check center, it's a position of need. George Cartwright played left guard at Ole Miss. We have him here as a center. Only 21 years old with B awareness. Good to great speed. Great to elite change of direction. He's not a power guy, but does have A run block power. B pass block power. Very interesting. Um, for someone that isn't particularly strong, you know, it's kind of surprising to see his his power is rated so high. A lead blocking, you'd, you'd expect impact blocking to be pretty high as well. It's an interesting player, maybe in round two. Sean White, we know him for shredding half pipes at the Olympics. Sean spelled a little bit differently, but don't worry about it. Uh, he's not a run blocker at all, D run block, but does have A awareness. And this is a day three guy. This is not someone you'd be taking, you know, before round five probably. But his A awareness, A to C pass block, you'd expect to be closer to that A, with great to elite agility. He's a he's a decent mover, is not strong, and is not a run blocker. If you need someone to pass block, Sean White's probably your guy. And you could say the same about Mitchell Stockton here, who is guaranteed A pass block for someone that's probably gonna go undrafted, not a run blocker. We know it for a fact. But one of the better pass protecting centers or offensive linemen period in the draft. Uh, there are some jokes to be made here with, with Doug Hudick, for sure. For sure. We're going to avoid him. A impact blocking. He's got great to elite strength and agility with A lead block, A run block finesse, A impact blocking. Run block in general, I think would be quite high. Jared Middleton's another guy projected to go in that same range. A little bit heavier at 337 pounds, but uh, looks like he's a pretty good athlete too. Good to great speed and strength and acceleration, I wanted to say in there as well. And we know his pass blocking is going to be pretty good. Definitely some good guards. And then here are the tackles expected to go pretty high. Andrew Charles out of Miami. Larry Williams out of Michigan State. Charles is a true round one guy. F run blocking for Larry Williams, by the way. Joe Fuller. Uh, seems like he could be pretty good out of Clemson. Trevor Warner from Stanford. A pass blocking. I mean, if you had even decent run blocking, I would definitely consider, uh, you know, taking a player like that. But with Evan Neal, no real, no real need. But DeMarcus Lyons is where it starts to get interesting for me. He has A awareness, A, or excuse me, B impact blocking, B pass block. B to D run block's not great, but the physical's great to elite change of direction, solid to good speed, like not horrible. Like maybe you'd consider playing him at, at guard, B pass blocking and A pass block finesse. Like I like the look of that. And for someone that might be available in round three, you could consider moving some guys around. Again, it's something to consider, not the end all be all. Um, we would consider maybe beefing up our defensive line as well. Uh, I do like Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari, but they're not the end-all be-all. Have Ed Griffin and Terrell Merritt out of Tulane in Florida, uh, respectively. Both projected to go round one, both with B finesse move for speed rushers, which already I'm not super interested. I think Ed Griffin is a pretty good athlete, though, out of Tulane. Yeah, good to great speed. Great to elite change of direction as well. Uh, Monty Rankin is like this hybrid defensive tackle almost. Uh, C block shed's not great for that, but A tackle, B power moves, not a finesse rusher, but is a decent athlete. A stamina, B power moves, like there is something here with Monty Rankin. If he gets to round two, you might consider it. Manny Thomas, B finesse moves is kind of his go-to. Another like great athlete, good to great speed, great to elite acceleration, great to elite jumping, kind of signifies explosiveness, but don't know how much that's going to impact the game. 
But B awareness, B play rec, B finesse moves. He's just going to be a solid player with, with great athletic upside. And for someone that could be available in round two, again, you'd consider it. Another big boy here, Zach Davis, 6'5", 285. Probably looking at more of a defensive tackle. Not the fastest, but is very strong. Would work well in a 3-4. B awareness, B black shed, B power moves. A pursuit and A tackle. Zach Davis out of Vanderbilt, not bad. There are some pretty good defensive ends in here. BJ Finch out of Washington State it's intriguing as well. Uh, B finesse moves, B tackle. Good to great speed. Like, not too bad. At right end, you have another defensive tackle type build. Tony Morris, not really much of a pass rusher, but does have A block shedding and A tackle. Great to elite strength, but poor to marginal speed. Like, you're looking at basically a defensive tackle that's listed as defensive end, but you'd expect because he is a defensive end that even though he has A block shedding, A play rec, A tackle, those you'd expect, at least block shedding and tackle, to be slightly lower for a defensive end than they would be at defensive tackle. So why not just take a defensive tackle? Tony Morris is a little bit confusing to me for those reasons. And so is Thomas Whiteside. Six foot five, 301 pounds, very similar build, A block shed, A tackle. Again, not the best athlete, but is very strong. They look very similar. Just awareness on him is a C as opposed to the A or B it was for uh, the top guy. A hit power though is interesting. But yeah, Tony Morris and Thomas Whiteside. Not really sure my interest level there. When you move to actual defensive tackle, another Georgia guy, Damian Davis. You guys know Jordan Davis, Georgia defensive tackle drafted last year. This is Damian Davis. Does have some good player notes. Seems like he has some good traits in there. But not a huge pass rusher. Run stopper archetype, you'd expect that block shouldn't be a B. A tackling. Great to elite strength though and good to great speed. A lot of good to great in there as well. You might have something here with Damian Davis, but for someone that's projected to go round one, not really sure that's in my range. Benji Stewart from Louisville looks very well balanced. Same for Will Stewart, another Georgia defensive lineman. Nick Spencer from Wisconsin, maybe the best pass rusher of the bunch with great to elite speed. B awareness, B power moves. There's something here with him. C block shedding, C finesse moves, really not that bad if you're going to be a great to elite speed type guy. TJ Ford, another Georgia guy. Lonnie McDowell from USC too. A finesse moves. C block shedding is not bad. C power moves, not bad with A finesse moves. Good notes as well. Signifies good traits. 6'5", 299 with great to elite jumping and acceleration. Good to great speed and strength with A finesse moves and play rec. And for a round two to three projection, I'm looking at a potential three, four defensive end, or maybe a third defensive tackle in there. If we move to a four, three, Leonard Williams moves over. We would have Dexter Lawrence moving over. And then Lonnie McDowell as a mid round, kind of just like pass rusher, bringing in some juice that we don't quite get with Dexter Lawrence. I like it. I like the idea of it. And then left outside linebacker is where things, I think, in my opinion, like get really, really good. Hugh Scott is a power rusher. We know that he has whatever athleticism, except he's very strong with A to C finesse moves and B to D power moves. Now, because he's a power rusher, I expect his finesse moves to be a C and I expect his power moves to be a B. That would be my bet. Probably going to avoid him. Eddie Hemsley is who is mocked to us. He's got B tackling, block shedding is whatever. Pursuit could be quite good. Looks like he's a pretty good athlete. Solid to good speed. Not the end all be all for a pass rusher. A to C finesse moves, B to D power moves. I would expect him to have probably at least B finesse moves. Could be an A, but I don't think it'll be a C. But David Crawford is really intriguing out of Ohio State. Block shedding could be a concern, but A to C pursuit, A to C tackle, A zone coverage. He's got great to elite in agility, change of direction, and speed. Projected to go around two to three with A awareness, B play rec, A zone coverage. We don't really know that much about tackling and pursuit right now, 
maybe he would be a good candidate to become a, a focus player so we can really learn more about him and see how good he actually is. Shane Flaherty, similar type player, just not quite the same level of athleticism or top end speed, but great to elite for acceleration, agility, change of direction, all very good. With A awareness, B pursuit, tackling could be a bit of a concern, but coverage, A to C for man and zone, could be quite good. And Akil Edmonds, again, very similar type player, around three to four projection. B to D block shedding, a little bit concerning. He's only 5'11", but 231 pounds. B pursuit, A to C tackle, A to C zone coverage, great to elite speed and change of direction, good to great acceleration and agility. And then skills wise, he looks well-rounded. A to C awareness and hit power, B man, B play rec, B pursuit, A to C tackle and zone coverage could end up being quite good. Again, seems like another potential value play in round three to four, another potential focus player, in my opinion, as well. Middle linebacker, we talked about Dalton Stallings a little bit. I just don't really see the hype with him. He could end up being better than I expect because I guess I'm, I'm kind of anticipating a lot of these ranges to be in the middle, but if they're at the top end, yeah, you know, maybe he's quite good. Although, Dontrell Cobb is the one that's most intriguing to me. Six foot two, 245 pounds, is 22 years old out of Notre Dame. B to D block shedding, I don't love. But A to C pursuit, B tackle, A zone coverage are all things I like a lot. Great to elite speed matters more at inside linebacker than it does at outside linebacker because you're getting those pass rushers in there as well who are naturally going to be slower. So great to elite speed for an outside linebacker could be like 85 to 87 speed. Great to elite speed for an inside linebacker could be, you know, 88 to 90 plus. So that's what we're dealing with potentially with Dontrell Cobb, who is A awareness, B play rec, A zone coverage, B tackling, power moves could be quite good as well, but pursuit, hit power, block shedding, definitely some concerns with him as well. He's not a home run pick. DeAndre Lane is who the team wanted me to check out. Turns out he's terrible. But then Derek Cooper down the board, another intriguing player. You're probably wondering why. Six foot two, 227 pounds with B to D block shedding. Same concerns we've had with some of these other backers. C pursuits, not great. B to D tackle could be not great. And F zone coverage looks awful. Physicals though, he's got great to elite speed and good to great acceleration with confirmed A hit power. Down the board for around three to four projected player, you get someone that can run fast and hit hard. Pretty fun middle linebacker to add to your team. Alan Lucas from San Diego State is another interesting one to me. Some similar deficiencies for sure, but great to elite agility, great to elite speed, and where the hit power isn't there, he's just a good athlete. A right outside linebacker, Avery Atkinson was someone that really wasn't blowing me away, but the more you think about it, the more he looks like a really good player. 6'5", 253, 22 years old. Only C block shedding, but that's not bad for an edge rusher. A pursuit, pretty great. A to C tackle, whatever athleticism, kind of like okay but keep in mind he is a pass rusher and those physicals are being bulked in with the off ball players too a finesse moves which is great b power moves which is already pretty good avery atkinson could be an elite level pass rusher is projected to go quite high freddie samuels we checked out earlier in the year i expected him to be a pass rusher not the case run stopper archetype b zone coverage a pursuit a to c tackle a to c block shed Good to great speed. I like the look of that, but he's playing off ball. He's not going to be or need to be able to cover. B zone coverage. A pursuit as well. A play wreck. Some question marks, but the player looks pretty good. And I kind of trashed the one Washington State linebacker, Dalton Stallings, projected to go number one right now, or at least the number one player um, on the big board. Keegan McCree, I think, could be better. 21 years old, 6'2, 242 pounds with B block shedding. A pursuit, A tackle, already great, A to C zone coverage, good athlete, not elite, but good, good to great acceleration, great to elite change of direction, I love at linebacker, especially if he could be a user type player, good to great speed, there is potential there, and then skills, we talked about some of them already, and potentially be even higher, B awareness, B block shedding, I love, A pursuit, A tackle, I love, a to C man, A to C zone, A to C play rec, 
A to C hit power. There is a ton of potential with the 21-year-old Keegan McCree out of Washington State. Daniel Bibbs from Mizzou is a pass rusher. Has some deficiencies for sure, but is a good athlete, good to great speed with A to C finesse moves. Could be at the top end of that and could be really good value in round three to four. Might be worth a shot. But Brett O'Sullivan, A pursuit, A tackle. This is a day three projected player. C block shedding with great to elite speed. Acceleration's not good. Change of direction is good though. And the skills are quite good. Brett O'Sullivan, day three is going to be tough to avoid. At cornerback, we talked about Daniel Brinkley at length. I kind of made it known where I am on that. I know he's probably the highest rated player in the draft. And it is at a position of need somewhat. Boundary corner. But as crazy as this is to explain, I just don't know if that means he is a great fit for us for some of the reasons I outlined earlier with the speed deficiencies. That's just kind of where I am on that. And the fact that we'd have to take him so high in the draft. Like, is he significantly better than Sean Hawthorne, who is younger by a year, six foot 187. Man coverage is a C compared to an A. Press is an A, which is great. B, zone coverage, pretty good. Good to great acceleration, great to elite agility, good to great speed, great to elite strength. If we took him at the end of the first round, knowing that he's a better athlete with some at least similar skills, I don't know. Not that we would take him, but I'm just saying it's an interesting conversation. I, I, like it, It's so like wired into my brain to just take the highest rated player when we have one. It is because of all the rebuilds that I do, but I don't know that that makes the most sense in Madden franchise when you're actually playing the games. Uh, Emmett Trapp, Charles Love, Kentrell Wall, all around this round one to two spot. Khalid Wall out of Texas, hook him horns. Brent Norwood. There are not a lot of redeeming qualities with his, with his class, though. Um, the athletes just aren't there. You can look at all of them. Like, they're just not there. The, Antoine Short, maybe one day three that you would take a look at. And I do have him watch for that reason. But, um... Yeah, not, not incredible. The safeties, I thought Amari Bozeman would be better when we checked him out earlier on in the year. B hit power, B man, B tackle. Zone coverage is C to F. Good to great speed. Skills, pretty good. Dwayne Woodson out of Alabama, pretty good in coverage. Not the best athlete in the world, and I'm looking to take good athletes at safety. None of these safeties really blowing me away. I know you guys are going to be shocked by that. B zone coverage, solid to good speed. Just, it makes me not super interested. At strong safety, we do have some hybrid players. Like that man coverage could end up being, I would say at least a C, minimum, well obviously, but probably a B. The fact that he's hybrid with C zone coverage, good to great speed, B block shedding, B play rack. You're looking at a slot corner or, you know, a starting safety. He's interesting. Sydney Stevenson at a Boise State, B zone coverage. I always like the look of that but I just don't think he's a good enough athlete. Enrique Callahan, uh, it's interesting that he's run support. Like he has A hit power, A tackle, you'd expect. That's great. A to C zone coverage is why it's interesting because that could end up being really good. Even if it's just to C, that's pretty good. B zone coverage would be obviously even better. My only concerns are the decent to solid speed. That's not great for a safety. B block shedding though is, is pretty solid. 6'1, 222. Enrique Callahan, kind of looking like he could be a money backer. A little bit of linebacker action there. Kirk Lasley out of Iowa State. B zone coverage, 22 years old. Again, not the craziest athlete, but looks like he could be okay value down the board. Jimmy Calhoun, kind of the same story. I do like him a little bit more as he has B hit power and B zone coverage. Kind of tough to get that combo. But the marginal to decent speed, it's just kind of canceling him off my board there. And then uh, lastly, we'll focus on the specialists. Kicker. I like Wyatt Anthony out of Nebraska. UDFA with A awareness, B kick accuracy, A short accuracy as a thrower, but for a quarterback, keep in mind, with great to elite kick power. I am very interested 
in Wyatt Anthony. Very interested, especially with good to great speed as well. He seems like a perfect, you know, got to run a fake kicker, but also need a 60 yarder. He could probably hit it. And then at punter, I do have a guy on the board as well. Brock Cook at a Penn State. B kick accuracy with good to great kick power. Kind of all I'd be looking for. B tackle, whatever. But that is going to do it for this draft preview, guys. Stream is later today, 3 o'clock, maybe closer to 3.30 Central Time. Add an hour for Eastern Time. That's 4 o'clock or 4.30. Subtract two hours for Pacific Time. That's 1 or 1.30 Pacific. Yes, if you miss it, it'll be up on YouTube tomorrow. No need to worry. But should be a fun one, guys. I am super excited. Hope you guys are as well. Uh, plenty of draft stories. Yeah, these, this is why. Okay. Kennard has injury concerns. First team all conference for Henry Jackson. Atkinson. I'm going to skip the combine due to an injury. Edward Sloan. Best quarterback. Ooh, interesting. Texas Southern John Beltron could be a name to look out for. McFadden. Wow. Cecil McFadden, the Heisman winner. The LSU receiver. Okay, that's really interesting. Emmett Trapp. Oh, man, got benched. The LSU corner. Brad Samuels for Notre Dame. Might be somebody to check out. Wasn't really familiar with him. Logan Richardson, best guard in college football. And Malcolm Chambers, best safety in college football from West Virginia. Okay. You like that I know it's West Virginia despite it not saying that there? I spent a lot of time with this with this class, especially getting it in NCAA 14, college football revamped. But uh, some new names to add to the board here as we close it out. The receiver, Beltron. John Beltron from Texas Southern. He looks pretty bad, bad athlete. Like, awful athlete, A break tackle, B spectacular catch. I'll add him to the board. Not super interested. And then Brad Samuels from Notre Dame. B to D block shed, deep pursuit, C tackle, bad athlete. Nope, not going to add him. But that's going to that's gonna do it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Should be a really, really fun episode. I'm super excited. Hope you guys are as well. Take it easy.